gentlemen, welcome to America's Auto Enthusiast Program. This is Auto World. And now, here's your host, Bob Long. I want to thank you very much for joining me here for another hour of Auto World. And this hour, as usual, we will be joined by our expert, Dan Watson. He's a guy with more than 25 years worth of lubrication experience and one of the largest AMS oil distributors in all of North America and Canada. So this guy really knows his stuff. We've gotten so many great emails and feedback about uh, the material that, that Dan uh, gives out each and every week, and uh, we're very lucky to have him. Telephone-wise, our telephone number remains the same. It's 855-660-4261. 855-660-4261. And uh, the email, bob at boblongradio.com. Quick trivia question throw out there. Let's see. This is such an easy one. Uh, who made the Matador? Which uh, domestic manufacturer made the Matador? Whoever gets the uh, correct, whatever, whatever gets the correct answer. Um we're going to get your prize from the Busted Knuckle Garage. Hey, do you need classic car insurance? Well, do yourself a favor and go over to Haggerty.com. Simply, no one is better. Or you can visit your local agent, and they'll get the Haggerty insurance for you. Haggerty, for people who love cars. Our guest line is powered by Haggerty. And we welcome the very powerful Dan Watson to Auto World. How you doing? Hey, I'm good tonight, Bob. Good, excellent. Really looking forward to uh, to our chat here. I happen to be with my wife and daughter and doing some errands and in our neck of the woods where you and I both live. And I went by. It was on Saturday, so I figured you probably weren't there. But I see your distribution center, and, boy, that is a really nice building. Remind myself and the folks how long you've been a distributor and and how business has been. Well, I've been with AMSO since 1991, and uh, I retired from the Navy just a couple years later in 19, summer of 1992. So I started out with AMSO just part-time like a lot of folks do. And Ansel, though, has been at this since uh, 1971, so long time they've been in business. And uh, we put out some information uh, over a couple of weeks just telling people that if they had any inclination that uh, this is an expanding business and that there's still opportunities for uh, new dealers to get involved in the Amsoil business. And I had quite a lot of uh, response to that. So I wanted to mention tonight to people again that the ANZO opportunity is exceptional. It's with a company that uh, provides products that, well, they just sell themselves because they are such outstanding and superior lubricating products. So this business is here to stay and uh, as it expands, need more dealers. So if someone is out there who uh, is looking for some opportunity, either part-time or full-time, this is a commission-based business. So what I usually tell people is be careful. Uh, you probably want to start this business as a part-time person and then work your way to a position in your uh, business where you may then go full time, but in either case, however you choose, you would want to do it. It's a good opportunity, and the only part of the lubrication market that is expanding in the United States and North America is the synthetic portion of the lubrication market. So it's there. It's available. And if you want to explore that, because this is, hey, this is, it's an easy business. If you want to explore it, 
all you got to do is get in touch with me, and uh, I'll explain all the ins and outs. Now, one thing I will tell you when going into the AMSOIL business as a dealer, it's okay. very important who your sponsor is. In other words, the person who is going to become your sponsoring dealer, because that person uh, needs to be knowledgeable and be able to give you inside information and train you on the ins and outs of doing this business. And it's important for you to look out for yourself and do your own, what you call due diligence, and you interview the person who wants to be your sponsor. Make sure you get somebody who will support you and who has the knowledge base to be an asset to you because once you're in the organization under that person, it's extremely hard for you to change to someone else. I get calls all the time from existing Amazon dealers wanting to know how wanting to know how they can be part of my organization. And in most cases they can't because they're already in the system under somebody else's organization. So I say that only to give any prospective dealer the advice that you need to make sure you get the right sponsor so that you can be successful. That's the only thing. It, it's just fair to you to make sure that you know that and that you uh, seek out the right person that will give you the right help. Now, That's so, so critical, absolutely. And you're the man, Dan. I mean, I, if I was going to get into the business, who, who better than Dan Watts? Well, and let me just give that contact information quickly. Uh, you can contact me directly uh, by phone at 800-370-2986, or you can email me, my name again, Dan Watson at thelubepage.com, or you can go to my website, thelubepage.com, and contact me through there. So I think, Bob, tonight what we're planning on doing is answering questions, so hopefully – uh, some folks will pick up that phone and give you a call at the number at the station, and uh, we can answer some questions. Because I find usually if a person's got one question, that, there's a hundred, several hundred people that have the same question. That guy's just yeah, calling in to true. represent all those people. That's so true. So don't be afraid, folks. Just pick up that telephone. Give us a call, 855-660-4261. And we've got a trivia question there about the, the X vehicle from General Motors with the early 1980s model. Uh, tell me the Oldsmobile variant or the Buick variant. Or you can tell everybody uh, uh, the story of the K car, which manufacturer brought us the K car. Our telephone is 855-660-4261, 855-660-4261. Email, I'm watching it right now. It's bob at boblongradio.com, bob at autoworldradio.com. Either one, it seems that more and more people these days are using autoworldradio.com, which is great. And we, we'd love to get your questions. You know, even though we're doing the show live right now, doesn't mean that one of those questions might get right on the air like we're going to be doing. Broadcasting from the middle of Corvette Boulevard and Stingray Avenue, this is Auto World with your host, Bob Long. A little red Corvette bringing us back here on Auto World. We've got Dan Watson. He is the uh, number one guy when it comes to oil on this program. He's our official in-house expert with more than 25 years of experience, one of the largest AMS oil dealers in all of North America. And before he got into the AMS oil business, he was in the Navy and worked on nuclear propulsion. And uh, he's got quite the resume and quite a growing business, and uh, he loves helping folks out. So once again, if you are considering uh, 
trying it out. I mean, if we got nothing to lose, uh, try it out part time. And then, as Stan said, I think it's very smart for him to be so upfront about saying, uh, don't quit your day job yet. Um, you better do this part time. And that's, that's a smart way to go. I've gotten a couple of emails with folks and I've passed them along to you because, you know, people, are looking to make money. I mean, the economy is better than it was under Obama, but uh, it, it's still not doing as well as as it seems to. Well, Bob, the thing about that is, uh, quickly, is that when you – there's a difference between when you have a good job, and, and you can have a good job, but, boy, it is hard to actually – increase your income when you have what's called a good job because you get raises, but the inflation yep. keeps going up. So sometimes the only way that you can break out of the income strata that you're in is to move to something which is not limited by the title of the position. See, when you work in the in corporate America or you work in any place, you're such and such. you got a job title. That job title carries a salary range. That's the salary range. It's not going to change because you're in the position. It's going to be from, say, 60000 to 80000 whatever the job is, and that's where it's going to stay. But when you get into self-generated revenue through a business that you can create on the side uh, in, as part-time and begin to build it, you find that you can create as much revenue or income as you are willing to put forth the effort to develop. And the thing about it that really uh, caught my attention and got me involved in it was that I've always been a person who's, uh, I go at something, I give 150%. I, I go at it the best I know how. And if I'm in a job, that means I'm going to do that job really very well for the same amount of money that if I did that job average because there's just no – I'm at a ceiling. There's nowhere else to go. But if I'm doing something that my increased effort actually results in increased income, then I like that because the harder I work, the more money I make, and the results of my labor are obvious as I keep going at it. And I like that kind of opportunity. And I think there's people out there who have that um, spirit of uh, – entrepreneurship, that they want to do something that they can sink their teeth into and actually see a result of their work rather than <laughs> just have the security of a good job but be stuck in a certain payment level, and that's where it's yeah. going to be. So it's the kind of person that likes to break out of that and do something different. You know, there's that independent entrepreneur spirit that uh, people have, and that's the kind of people that succeed in a business like Amsel. So we're hoping to have some of those people contact us. I I have uh, new dealers all the time, and many of them growing their businesses and doing very well. This is a a good business opportunity, a real business opportunity. It's not a fly-by-night thing because it's been going on for since 1971, and it's only uh, for many years Amsel grew at a double-digit rate constantly and went from uh, a small – 4,000 square foot beginning little operation to in a plant that is just short of a million square feet. So uh, that's quite a charge to go in, in from the founder all the way to his uh, passing away here a couple of years ago. That's quite an accomplishment for uh, Albert Amatuzio, you know, young kid from Duluth. Absolutely. You know, Amazing. He's, he's like an American story, American dream story come true. So now as we – it said to the folks, we, we're looking for your questions, and yep. uh, we have a couple that we uh, that came into me on email, I think, that I forwarded over to you. Uh, yeah. We get a gentleman from Florida. I know he's got a 3.8 liter Taurus, and uh, he's got some questions. Why don't you, since my Internet is doing Oh, no, that's all right. Me. Yeah, this, this uh, fellow has a 3.5 liter uh, Ford Taurus, and he tells me that his name his name is Dave and he's been running 5W20. Uh, excuse me, Ford calls out for 5W20 and he's been running 0W20 
AMSL, our signature series, for the last 25,000 miles. And he says, other Internet chatter says 20 weight is bad in Florida and recommends a 30 weight. The variable cam timing system works off of oil pressure, so I'm concerned about changing oil specs. He says, am I thinking about this too much, and is 0W30 better? Well, he's, he's asked a very pertinent question because uh, our listeners know that 20-weight oil is just uh, prevalent now throughout the industry uh, in the last five years. So, so many vehicles are all moving over to 5W or 0W20 as their factory load when they're coming out. Now, 20-weight oils, you've got to make sure that you buy high-quality oil. This is the first answer I would give to Dave, is that whatever 20-weight you use, 520 or 0W20, you better make sure that it's a synthetic and that it's a quality synthetic because there's not a lot of margin to where you get into trouble when you're using a 20-weight oil. It's fine at its 20-weight in these engines. That's what they're designed for. But just a spike in temperature or some heavy loading, pulling a trailer, doing some different kind of things, you may push that oil into, uh, let's just say, where it's uncomfortable. It's not working as well because you're pushing its limits. Now, in truth, in Florida, 0W20 and 5W20 are interchangeable because that first number with the W, for our listeners, you can just consider that the winter rating. And we don't have enough winter in Florida to worry about the difference between a 5W and a 0W. But for those of you who live in Minnesota or North Dakota or Maine or any of the northern states that drop below zero, then... 0W20 would actually be a better oil than 5W20 because it has a better cold weather rating. That 0W means that it will pump better in colder weather than that 5W means. So in general, they're interchangeable in Florida, but not everywhere that this radio broadcast goes. So 0W20 would be a better oil in extremely cold weather. I think we're going to have to finish this one up right after the break. That sounds like a great idea. Get on board, 855-660-4261 or Bob at AutoWorldRadio.com. And now, back to the show with the highest octane, AutoWorld and your host, Bob Long. Dan Watt, CEO of TheLoopPage.com, is with us, and Dan is one of the nation's leading AMSOIL distributors, both in the U.S. and uh, throughout North America. If you have a question, we'd love to hear from you at 855-660-4261. And we get the question out there, we could do with uh, the K-Car who was the maker of the K-Car? It's a series of vehicles built by one domestic manufacturer. We'll leave it at that. And we were talking about the question that came in with the 3.5-liter V6 and the concerns that the, the owner had about the uh, the weather in Florida. So he said that zero W. 20 is okay. Yes, um, yes uh, the, he was asking about 20-weight uh, oil in general and would 5W or 0W be okay. And as I said before, in Florida, that doesn't make much difference. That first number, the 5W20 or 0W20, the first 5W and 0W, those numbers represent the winter rating with the 0W having a better winter rating than the 5W. So for our listeners that live in the northern climates, the 0W uh, would have a better starting characteristic in that very cold weather than the 5W. Now, he asked about um, could he run a 30-weight oil in Florida, and the, the complication was is that Ford uses a variable valve timing system in this engine. And that variable valve timing 
is uh, operated uh, not um, the engine oil is used to make movements in that system. They have these uh, uh, different abilities. It gets too complicated to tell people how it works, but you can have uh, a phaser, it's called system, which uses pressure of the oil to uh, move the timing chain to adjust the, uh, to uh, what would you call it, advance the timing or retard the timing of the valves with response to the spark. But anyway, that being as it is, uh, that system, Ford is very touchy if you use anything more than a 20 weight because they're saying that system has to respond quickly and thick oils may slow down its response and cause a drivability problem. Now, 0W30 AMS oil, especially in the southern climates, will not do that. It moves extremely fast and then particularly because it's the 0W side that is taking care of business during the cooler operations of the engine. Once the engine's up to full temperature, that 30 weight oil from the Amazon Signature Series will that um, it will operate that variable valve timing with the same quickness as a 20 weight oil. So if you were going to be uh, towing boats or towing horse trailers and you had a situation where you were running the 20 weight oil, you might want to run the 0W30 to get a little bit better uh, heavy load protection and still have the same response in your variable valve timing. But to all of our listeners out there, variable valve timing is serious business that you can mess it up with too thick of oil. So please don't go putting 20W50 or 10W40 oil in any of these engines that have variable valve timing. Uh, you'll be going into the dealership wanting to know why your car doesn't run right, and you will get absolutely blasted for having put that thicker oil in that car, and in fact, if it created a bad enough problem they had to do work, it will void the warranty. So do not put thick oil in a variable valve timing situation. Um, it won't work right, and it could cause you big problems if you have a warranty issue. So I think we got that one covered, Bob. Yeah, you did a fantastic job as usual with that one. You know, we, we talk a lot about oil on the program, but AMSOIL makes a whole wide variety of, of other fluids because there are so many different systems within a vehicle that require fluid. And I know we got a, we got a call out. Somebody emailed us up to do with uh, transmission and wanting to know your thoughts about changing that fluid. Yes, yes. Uh, transmission fluid is um, it's pretty straightforward. The most complex piece of machinery in your car by far is your automatic transmission. And the most difficult lubricant to formulate in your car is transmission fluid. There's a couple of things working against us when we make transmission fluid. One is it's literally down around a, <coughs> excuse me, around a 10 weight oil. Now, that's a very thin oil, yet in the transmission, it has to lubricate real steel gears, gears that are the same as they are in a manual transmission as far as the, the gear itself. There are other things in the transmission, automatic transmission. You have a torque converter, which is like a pump that pumps high-pressure fluid. You have a hydraulic system, which is operating and moving different components in the transmission uh, as directed by the brain of the transmission. And I have to have a fluid that can stand the interaction of steel gears and protect those gears as well as a gear loop does in a uh, manual transmission. And then I turn around and I need this fluid to be quick hydraulically and operate quickly. And then I squeeze this fluid between a series of wafer clutch discs that are uh, abrasive so that they would actually stick together when they're pressed together, splined on a shaft. This stuff gets pretty complicated, but the real truth is I gotta come up 
with fluid to do all these different things. And so wow. transmission fluid takes real talent and skill on the formulator's part. And the great thing now is with a good quality synthetic base oil, you can get by and handle that 10 weight oil. See, the the problem is is that in a transmission you could use thicker oil. In fact, early days, real early days, they could use they used 30 weight oil. But in certain climates in this country where it gets really cold, uh, your transmission would cut your fuel economy in half, if not worse, for the first 30 minutes of operating your car with a transmission with thick, very cold, thick fluid in it. It would just, it's like a break almost, taking so much power from the engine just to turn everything through all this incredibly uh, thick, heavy oil, and the torque converter itself, which is like a pump, would be trying to pump this heavy stuff that takes all kinds of power off the engine just to get this thing going until it would warm up. So moving to lighter weight transmission fluid is a way to get a fast, responsive transmission, even though it's starting up cold. And that's the main reason that we've gotten to thinner and thinner oil. We now have um, original transmission fluids and from AMSOIL. We have what we call our, our uh, multi-vehicle transmission fluid. But we have a new one, which we call our fuel economy uh transmission fluid, fuel efficient, and it's a lighter weight because the newer cars are all calling for this lighter weight transmission fluid because when they have to do the mileage test for the government to determine what the fuel economy of that vehicle is, the government requires now that you have a combination of cold weather conditions in order to make this statement. Wow. It looks like we'll have to finish that discussion right after this break. <laughs> it certainly does. And again, we'll squeeze you in. 855-660-4261. I'm Bob Long. Ten miles east of the highway. Hot sparks burning the night away. Two lips touching together. Hey, it's Billy F. Gibbons from ZZ Top, and you're listening right here to Auto World. Talking about Amsoil with our regular Amsoil guy. He is one of the largest distributors in all of North America, and uh, he also has more than 25 years worth of experience. Before that, he was a involved in the Navy and the nuclear propulsion. So what a vast background and, and what a great guy. And we didn't quite finish up that last question, so why don't we do that and then move on. All right, Bob, we were talking about transmission fluid, and the reason we hadn't, hadn't quite finished it is because, boy, that's a subject that's a show of its own. But anyway, does just suffice to say that the transmission fluid is a very complex fluid to make. It's very thin. It's very lightweight. Uh, in fact, if transmission fluid runs at above 200 degrees, uh, most of the manufacturers would tell you you got to change it over 15,000 miles. If it runs over 210, you need to change it in 5,000 miles. So we're trying to keep transmission fluid under 200. Hopefully, it's close down to about 165. You know, nothing above that. But that doesn't work. It gets hot in all of these cars. Many. Um, uh, vans and trucks and vehicles have uh, isolated that transmission due to aerodynamics of the vehicle to where very little air gets past it. So we take oil up to the front of the car and we try to run it through a cooler in the bottom of the radiator to make an attempt to cool it off, and transmissions run hot. So in many cases, the best best option for any of these transmissions is to put a synthetic transmission fluid in those Transmissions. If it didn't come one, come with it, you need to put it in. If you had a synthetic transmission fluid in the vehicle when you bought it, then pay attention to the long-term change intervals. And there's a huge company that backs up the idea of using synthetic transmission fluid, and that is Allison. Allison makes heavy-duty transmissions for buses, 
trucks, over-the-road trucks, everything. They are a renowned manufacturer of big, heavy-duty automatic transmissions. When you buy a new Ford Power Stroke uh, F-350 diesel to pull your 36-foot triple slide-out RV trailer <laughs> across the country, <laughs> which many people are doing these days, here's something, or you've got a pusher, big pusher, or, or you've got a uh, RV, or you've just got a work truck that you're pulling a heavy trailer with, any of these kind of things, and you have an Allison transmission in, actually to get an Allison, it would be in a Duramax or Chevy Silverado or a uh, a GM product because that's where you find the Allison transmission. And Allison will allow the company to sell a three-year extended transmission warranty, but you have to flush and fill the transmission with a qualified synthetic transmission fluid in order for them to back that warranty of three extra years. So what does that really tell you about the people who make the transmission understand it, what protects it, they are telling you what they believe is that synthetic transmission fluid is the only thing they're going to put their money at risk on. So maybe that's the only thing you should put your money at risk on is synthetic transmission fluid. It's a difference in night and day. There is no comparison between petroleum transmission fluid and synthetic transmission fluid. There's just no comparison. It's like trying to compare high-performance radial tires with trailer tires. It just, there's no comparison. So that's one place where I can tell you unequivocally, no, it's not okay if you just continue with petroleum in your vehicle. Everybody out there listening, number one tip I can give you uh, tonight is that you would be better off with synthetic transmission fluid. So at the, at the next maintenance interval that your transmission is scheduled to be changed, go to automatic uh, synthetic automatic transmission fluid. Now, our caller had asked the question at 148,000 miles, and he had never changed a filter or done anything to his transmission. Could he go to synthetic? Well, this is a whole other discussion, so we're probably this is the last question we're going to probably get in in this, this, uh, this session because it's shaky to change transmission fluid with anybody's transmission fluid once you have 148,000 miles with some standard transmission fluid that you've never changed the filter and maybe never changed the oil because um, if that transmission fluid was overused, we call it burnt transmission fluid, transmission is still working but not very well because once that stuff gets beyond its life, it begins to varnish and just plate out stuff all inside the transmission. Wow. Well, yeah, and if you remember, I when I said to our listeners earlier was you got this set of wafer clutches. If you can imagine, folks, it's like a set of um, computer discs, a little bigger than your DVD disc, and you've got, say, a stack of six or eight of them uh, in a row, and through the middle hole they've got a spline shaft, and these guys are abrasive on each side. Then you got some hydraulic action that forces them together so that they can't turn independently of each other. Okay. That when they go together, if they've got the right uh, formula of transmission fluid between them, they will engage as designed. If the transmission fluid is worn out, varnish will coat on there, and they will begin to slip. And as they begin to slip, they'll wear off that clutch dust. And when that clutch dust mixed with, mixes with that varnish that's in the transmission fluid, it'll clog up every small porting connection that's in that transmission and you are done. It is over. Uh, just consider how much it costs to get either a new car or a new transmission. There's mm -hmm. no going back. So that's what I'm saying is you can't say, well, yeah, I did some extra wear. I got that engine oil out. It's still running. No, when you really force that transmission fluid way out beyond its life, it, it's virtually just waiting for the time when it dies. So change your transmission fluid on time according to your manufacturer with whatever you've got in it. But when you change it, go to somebody's synthetic transmission fluid. Do not stay with the cheap petroleum. It can't take the heat we're running these transmissions at. Back in 1980s when the transmissions were around 140, 50 degrees, not too bad. Today, most transmissions are running only a few degrees cooler than your engine. 
And if your engine's running at 195 and your transmission's running 175, it's cooking some lightweight petroleum. You can't take it. Mm-hmm. So it just it, this is one of those we just have to tell people, you need to just understand that you will save yourself headache and a lot of money if you just upgrade the synthetic transmission fluid on the next regular scheduled maintenance you have. Now, the question is, what do you do with any transmission? You're not sure whether the fluid's good. Let's talk about that real quickly. You can do a little field test. Mm-hmm. Transmission fluid is usually pink in color. Not all of it. Some of the foreign ones aren't. But most American type, they're pink. So your first thing to look for is the color of the transmission fluid. If it's still pink to red, hey, it's it's really in pretty good shape. If you look at it and it's lost its pink color, there's not much left of that, and it looks like a it's a dirty brown, well, uh, take the transmission dipstick out and take a very uh, clean uh, white napkin and put some drops on that napkin. Let them soak in and see if they are uniform when they soak in or if they leave a ring at the outside edges of the drop. If they leave a ring at the outside edge of the drop, I could be real crass here and say, seek trade-in. Take your car for trade-in. It would be the best thing to do if there's a ring around the outside of that that drop (laughs) because that means that there's so much uh, debris in that transmission that it's literally, it, it kind of floats in the thing until it can't go any further, and then it's the stuff that's on the outside of the stain, if you know what I mean. It's like a uh, eyeliner put around the stain. That's really bad news. But if you don't see that, the next thing to do is to smell the transmission fluid. Yes, I know what we're smelling transmission fluid. Let me tell you, if it's burned, you can smell it. It has mm. a very foul, burnt sort of odor, like a piece of burning plastic, okay? And uh, that's how it'll smell. And if you've got burnt transmission fluid, you're going to need to go to a transmission shop and talk to them about how they're going to do a careful flush of that transmission, try to get all this stuff out, and try to get you set back up. Because the problem is, depending on how long the transmission fluid has been burned, it can leave all kind of residue in that transmission. If you come in with anybody's transmission fluid into a varnished-up transmission, all transmission fluids, whether they're synthetic or petroleum, are highly solvent. Folks, what that means is they clean with aggressiveness, okay? So when you put a new load of transmission fluid into a varnished up transmission, it'll begin to strip varnish like it should everywhere out, skin it out. You think, well, good, that's going to get caught in the filter. No, most of it's going to get caught between the clutch faces. It's going to cause that transmission to slip like the devil and probably be ruined. So if you want more information on this, we got great information at the loop page. And send us your questions. We'll answer them on air. That's right. Dan Watson at thelubepage.com. Bob at autoworldradio.com. Thank you, Dan. See you next time, Bob. That will do it for this hour. Folks, this is Bob Long, host of Auto World Radio, with great news. We have a new sponsor, Dan Watson, who distributes AMSOIL throughout the USA and Canada. Dan is one of AMSOIL's largest distributors. He's a former U.S. Navy nuclear specialist and a certified lubrication specialist with 25-plus years of experience. You can listen to Dan every Sunday evening live at 6 p.m. Eastern Time here on GCNlive.com. Get all of your questions answered and ensure you get the best lubrication for your car, truck, boat, or really anything that moves. In 1972, Amsoil pioneered synthetic lubrication, and Amsoil continues to provide the best lubrication money can buy. Get the best advice for the best results. Contact Dan at thelubepage.com. That's thelubepage.com. Or call 800-370-2986. That's 800-370-2986.